Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time today to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, naturally, as I sit down to film, the cats are outside of my door crying, or they were just a second ago, but maybe they've stopped at this point. Um, basically, in today's video, I'm going to be doing my Riku deck tech, and I have been requested so many times to do this deck tech ever since I mentioned this deck to you. Like, it feels like two years ago at this point. Um, but basically, my whole, my whole thought process behind it is I feel like the deck was just really rough and I feel like because I wasn't playing magic I feel like I wasn't getting a good grasp of like what to tweak and all that kind of stuff and this deck is still rough. I just want to be like really clear and say I'm not at 100% with this deck. I need to take out stuff. There's probably a good solid like 10 to 15 cards that I'm looking to like take out and exchange for something else. So if you're like, Tracy, why is this in here? It's like, yeah, because I haven't really looked at this deck and paid attention to it and did, did done the tweaks that I want to. So um, yes, I'm highly aware that this deck is not finalized. I was trying to get it at that point, but then I was like, you know what? It's just been taking me such a long time to do that. Let's just like put my foot down and let's just do it. So basically this deck will be listed in the down bar below. Um, like I said, it is pretty rough. Um, but I really hope that you guys enjoy it anyway, and, uh, yeah, let's just hop into it. So, cool, Riku, the whole point is, you know, making copies of things, making copies of my opponent's things. I know that Riku itself, um, cannot do this because it does say enters the battlefield under your control, but the point is to make copies of other things. There are two, I believe, two infinite combos in this deck. Um, and the deck is honestly just really silly. It's not trying to take itself too seriously. So if you go into this expecting something serious, you're, you're not at the right deck deck. So, um, I have other decks that do that, but not this one. This deck is more silly. Let's talk about our mana base, 35 lands. Y'all know, sweet spot. We've got four mountains. Um, mountains are like the least primary color. We have, um, seven islands and, uh, similar to that we have, um, seven, I also know that these are all mismatching. This tech, it's kind of a hot mess, if we're going to be honest. So, um, okay, cool. Uh, let's talk about the rest of these specialty lands. So the first specialty land I have in here is Alchemist Refuge, which if I'm running these colors, of course, I'm going to be running an Alchemist Refuge. I absolutely love, 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 love this card. The next card I run is um, Botanical Sanctum. And I feel like I have cards that are, are similar to this that are in this same cycle or hold up. Yes, I also have this one, which is Spire Buff Canal. Those are also in the same cycle. I don't have the other one, but yeah, these are these are pretty cool lands and I like them. I My colors are very, very, very important in this deck. So um, I definitely will probably be working on this mana base as well, just to make sure that I can get my colors because I have my colors. I'm very sensitive with my colors in this deck. Okay, the next card is Command Tower, of course. I run Desolate Lighthouse, or as I like to call it, Desolate Loot House. This card is absolutely an essential here. I don't really care about the card that I discard it. I'm usually just trying to fish for something if I'm playing this card. The next card I run is Fiery Islet, which I think I have the other one as well. Yes, I have um, Waterlogged Grove. Similarly, I don't have the other one. They've done these cycles, right? Like they've done these cycles and the other ones, right? With like the other colors. I'm pretty sure they have. Oh, I don't know, because these are modern... I have no idea, but um, I do need to pick up that other one. That's definitely on my list. Those uh, cash lands, as I like to call them. Then I have um, Frontier. I have no idea how to say that, but this is a tri-land. I, like, I need to get the other tri-land for this deck. Um, then I have Ghost Quarter. I always like to have like at least one um, land destruction card because you never know. People do crazy things and you're going to want to remove their lands, you know? Um, then I run Mirror Pool, and I just really like this card. It's really silly. This is one of, like, the, um, copy ones. Um, this one is not one of the ones that offers me, um, mana of any color, and there's only one other land, or one other land, more land that we're gonna talk about that, um, doesn't do that, but I just, this card's too good to not run. You know what I mean? Then I run Myriad Landscape, which I really love because it gets me two lands. They do enter the battlefield tapped, but honestly, it's okay by me. It's a little bit slow, but I do really like that it gets me two because I'm very, uh, my curve is pretty high. I have Reliquary Tower because I draw a lot of cards in this deck. Then I run Root Bound Crag. I have Scalding Tarn. Funny enough, this is the only fetch land that I have. When they do the cycle again with the other colors, I will be getting um, the other two colors that I have a full set, but we just didn't have any spare shocks of these other colors, so... Um, hold up, even though the, wait, I don't have the green 
blue one didn't that one get reprinted? I honestly have no idea, guys. I, I really truthfully can't keep up. Um, The only fetch land I have is Steam Vents. Like I said, this mana base is rough. Like, it's not 100% where I want it to be. Um, But that is what it is. And then I have two of the temples. Not even the third. I'm... This, this, seriously, I... Like, really, this, this is kind of a mess. I'm telling you guys. Okay, let's jump next into enchantments because I only run five. The first card that I run is Double Vision. And this one is only your first. So it's not like this card stacks. Um, that would honestly be a little bit ridiculous if it did stack. So I feel like this card is fine, but I feel like I need more testing with this to really determine if this card is, you know, good. You know what I mean? Uh, cool. Okay. The next card I run is Leyland of Anticipation, which I love this card. I run this card to Leela as well. And, um, I had, I got a foil, so I put the non-foil one in this deck and I just think this card is like absolutely awesome. I love casting things not on my turn. Then I have this card called Metamorphic Alteration, which is really great because I have a couple of cards in here that are like supporting like mana dorks that are like one ones that are not really doing a whole lot. And then I can potentially make them really threatening to my opponent's things or um, one of my things or slash the, uh, well, you'll see the Biovisionary combo. I feel like I should just, I, I run Biovisionary in this deck. I feel like I just need to kind of say that because a lot of these cards are like about relate to Biovisionary, you know, but this card can do anything. This card's actually really good and it's only two mana, which I like. Then I run Omniscience, which, you know, just makes a lot of sense because I can just cast a bunch of things for free. And the last um, enchantment I run is Splinter Twin. So this was the other uh, infinite combo. And I feel like at this point, we should just might as well talk about the other cards of the infinite combo because it just makes sense. I do run the twin combo and I run Deceiver Arc Start and Pestermite, of course um as you know rule of thumb but yeah I just really feel like I wanted to cast these in this deck because it made sense and they're just you know I wanted to so yeah cool okay so that is it for um the art not artifacts sorry the enchantments now let's talk about our artifacts so I run 12 the first one I run is chromatic lantern which of course we're running three colors colors are very important we have to run our chromatic lantern um, then I run the Is It Signet and Garul Signet. Like I said, I have two out of the um, three. I do not know why I don't have the other third one. I think we just didn't have any spare copies of it is what happened, but I have those. Um, I run Lightning Greaves, and similarly to that, I run Swift Foot Boots. Um, classic, I really, really need these in this deck because I really need to cast these and put them on Riku because I need to protect him. Then I run Primal Amulet, and um, this card's really cool. So Instants and Sorceries cost one less to cast. And then um, whenever I cast, I have a ton of Instants and Sorceries. I run 19 Instants and 12 Sorceries, so I have like, a ton. I have like basically 30. And um, if I get these counters on it, this card flips. And the, the effect of this card is like absolutely perfect. Like this is like Riku in a card. You know what I mean? Like it just absolutely a thousand percent fits, which I absolutely love. So just copying things because that's like the point of this deck. So I love this card. I feel like it just perfectly fits. Okay, then I run Rings of Bright Hearth because um, this card works incredibly, incredibly well with um, Riku. So yeah. Then I run Simic Signet. Oh, I do have all the Signets. LOL. I'm sorry. I was like, I feel like I have all the Signets, but I first forgot it was uh, buried deep down there. I have Soul Ring. Then I have Spellbook because, like I said, I draw a lot of cards. Also, I just, like, I don't know what it is, but, like, this card is, like, one of my pet cards. Just the fact that it's zero mana. It's just so cute. I don't know what it is. I'm just, I really love Spellbook. I feel like I just needed an excuse to run it in something, and I'm so happy that I get to run it. The next card I run is Stry... Stryonic? Stry... Stry... Well, I just words I, I can't right now. Resonator. This card's awesome because it um, triggered ability. I get to do it twice, which is awesome. And I have, um you know, ways of like untapping. Like I have... Uh, I think I just have Seedborn Muse in this deck now that I'm thinking about it. I feel like I, I thought I had something else that made all my stuff untap, but I have that, which is really cool because then I can activate this card more than once. This card's awesome pretty sure oh I originally had this in rune that's why I was like why do I have that in foil but yeah uh and then I have thought vessel I love this card it does it does give me the colorless but it's it's okay you know we have to let it slide because thought vessel is great you know um normally I actually save the creatures for last but I feel like I want to start with them because I feel like the instant sorcerers are really cool so I feel like we're gonna start with the creatures so I like I said I run no I didn't say I don't know why I'm saying like I said because I didn't say it I have 17 creatures 
So this is kind of a mix of like supporting creatures, clones, and just mana acceleration. It's just, it's kind of a hybrid, you know what I mean? So the first card I run is Archeomancer because this card is absolutely stunning and phenomenal and I love this card. It's great. Um, okay, I've talked about Biovisionary as one of the win conditions. I have won games with this before. So before you're like, Tracy, it's kind of bad. It is kind of bad, but like, that's the point. Like, the point is this deck is jank and it's not trying to take itself too seriously. And I feel like the best card that's not trying to take itself too seriously is Biovisionary. Like, come on, if you're trying to be silly, but like, it's legitimate. It's like, it's a weird card, but I love it, you know? Okay, this is probably one of the coolest magic cards I own. This is a Spanish Birds of Paradise. I feel like I really needed this card. This was like one of those cards I feel like I really needed in this deck because I love that it offered me any colored mana, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, also just voila. I don't know. I just think that's hilarious. Okay, we're getting into the um, clones upon clones. So the first one I have is Clever Impersonator because it's a, a copy of a non-land permanent, so it can be anything. I feel like this is the one of the best shapeshifter cards, so that's why it's in there. And speaking of shapeshifters and clones and stuff, we have to have clone. It's like a staple. You know, it is only creature, but it's fine. Still a great card. I run Coiling Oracle. Dual Caster Mage, this card's awesome. I just, I really love this card. What's really awesome about Dual Caster Mage too, and like a lot of these other cards, is you can target your stuff or you can just target your opponent's stuff. Like nothing is stopping me from, you know, doing this on my opponent's dig through time. You know what I mean? Like seriously. Then I run Elvish Mystic. Again, this was just kind of when I was like, I feel like I just need more mana acceleration. And you'll see that in the Sorceries. I have a solid amount. I have Eternal Witness because I'm running green, so of course I'm running Eternal Witness. Then I have Goblin Electromancer, because again, I have 30 cards in the deck that are instance of sorcery, so Goblin Electromancer is super clutch in this deck. I feel like Young Pyromancer is also really good in this deck. Maybe I should put a Young Pyromancer in there. I don't know if I need it, but I feel like it'd just be good for the tokens. I don't know. I mean, Young Pyromancer is like a really good card. I've never had a reason to run it, but then I have um, Phyrexian Metamorph, and this is one of the, um, the Shapeshifter clone cards that I have, and... Um, yeah. Not a whole lot to say with these clone cards. They just, they kind of do what they do. You know what I mean? Then I have Sakura Tri Builder. Seedborn Muse, which is like one of the just MVP house cards in this deck. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Stunt Double. Just a lot of these four mana shapeshifters. I just have a lot of these. This one's got Flash too, which I really like. And the last one I have is Vesuvian Shapeshifter. This one is um, really cool. You know, my only morph. Maybe I should put another morph in here just to throw people off. Just be like, what morph is she playing? The world may never know. Okay, um, now let's jump into um, sorceries and instants. Let's do sorceries first. So the first one I, one I run is Banefire. And I feel like under normal circumstances, this card is probably not like the best card, um, but it can't be prevented if it's five or more. And the whole point of what you do and like why I'm running this card um, and I, you know, I guess I should just talk about Comet Storm. Yeah, I run Comet Storm this deck. I know everyone makes fun of this card. I, I get it. I understand. But it's not bad in this deck. And like, hear me out on this one. You, the really awesome thing about Riku's ability is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure we looked up a ruling on this. This is the way that it works, is you can do this. And then with Riku's ability, you can choose new targets. That's like the main thing is you can't like do it all at the same person. So it's like, really great politically because you can just split damage you know what I mean and then if someone gets mad you can be like nope I'm splitting the damage like I'm gonna do 10 here 10 there sort of thing so it does require like a lot of mana um but yeah um so yeah these are both like basically like the same like these are like very similar but I like them both and I feel like they make sense in this deck I had a lot more originally and I feel like I pared it down but this is like one of the main win conditions is just burning people out um you're probably not gonna want to target um, cause this does say creature or player. They both say creature or player, but your main thing is players. You want to be doing a lot of damage to face, you know? Um, cool. Okay. A uh, ton of mana acceleration. Like I said, I have Cultivate and Kodama's Reach. Not a whole lot to say here, but I really found that the curve was pretty high and I lowered it a lot. This deck has gone through a ton, ton, ton of tweaks and all that kind of stuff. So this deck has really gone through like a lot. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, speaking of, I have Explosive Vegetation. 
It's a great card. I love that it gets two lands. It is four mana, but honestly, it doesn't really bother me because it gets two lands. Um, every green deck I run always runs Fade into Antiquity because I just really want to be able to exile things. I know red does artifact destruction pretty well, um, but it doesn't really do enchantment destruction, and I wanted, you know, a way to do that, and I love this card that it exiles, so this card's awesome. It's one of my favorites. Um, cool. Then I have Farseek, another mana acceleration. I like this one as well because you get, um, anything that is not a basic, and I'm just about to feel tap. This card's awesome, and I absolutely love this art. This is, like... Oh, so beautiful. I love it. It's one of my favorite cards. Then I run Mass Manipulation, which this card is just literally hilarious. Like, I don't know what it is about this card, but I just think it's so funny. I just, I want to cast this card and just gain control of everything and then just, like, win. Or even if not, it's just funny. Even if you're like, I'm going to gain control of your, like, flyer thing. That's a 3-3. Three, three. I don't know. It's just funny, guys. I don't know. This deck is just funny. I like it. Then I run Ponder because, you know, I like shuffling and drawing cards and all that kind of good stuff. Rampant Growth, of course. Regrowth, one of my personal favorite cards. Oh my gosh, I love Regrowth. I just get so excited about green magic cards. It's like ridiculous how much I enjoy green magic cards. But um, this card is awesome. And with Riku, you get two things back. Oh, so good. Treasure Cruise, of course. And the last sorcery I run is Vandal Blast, of course, because people are going to be playing those pesky artifacts that you want to overload and destroy. All right, let's talk about our instants. There's 19. The first one is, I'm in like a Hamilton mood again. I mean, I'm always in a Hamilton mood, but I'm only 19, but my mind is older. Okay, so Blue Sun Zenith. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, draw all the cards, shuffle it back. Absolutely. This is like also just a stunning foil like that. I don't know what it's called, but when like the background is just like plain and then it's just foil like that, uh, I'm a sucker for. Love it. Okay. Counterflux. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite counter spells. Um, I, have a, I have a solid amount of counter spells in here. When I say solid, I mean like five, but that's like a lot for me because normally I run like two. But counterflux is really cool because it can't be countered. And it's down, you don't control, so it can't be, like, redirected back at you or something, and you can overload it if someone's, like, I don't know, doing crazy shenanigans. Cyclonic Rift, because you absolutely need a safety net, and, um, this deck can, like, not do a lot of things in the early game because you're just building in the early game, and you're, you know, you're like, cool, I have my Elvish Mystic, whatever, this can just, you know, stop your opponent's then I have Dig Through Time because I'm running blue, and I absolutely love Dig Through Time. It's, like, one of my favorite blue cards. I run Disdainful Stroke, which I absolutely love this card. It's so good. It counters so many things. Like, don't be fooled by 4 greater. It's, it's a good many things in Commander. Then I run Dissipate. Um, and I feel like there's a card that I have that's another one. Oh, this card's, like, kind of similar. I guess we could talk about these two cards together. I have Dissipate, and then I have Sinister Sabotage. These are just very similar. I really love Dissipate because it exiles. It is, like, three blue, and I feel like a lot of people are like, ooh, it's three blue. And I just realized that I don't have a counterspell in this deck. Um, it's on my list. It's on my list of things to order. That's something that I definitely know that I need. Um, and then Sinister Sabotage counters it, and then you get to Surreal One, which I like, and also it's this pretty sick promo, so that's cool. Um, okay, then I have Expansion and Explosion, and this is, like, again, one of those, like, quintessential Riku cards that I feel like is just made for Riku, you know what I mean? So this side is you copy Instant or Sorcery with four or less and choose new targets, classic Riku thing, and then this one is kind of the, like, deal damage, um, Drox cards, kind of like the, you probably want to do this, but if you're desperate, you can do this, do you know what I mean? Because this also draws cards, which I think is super cool, so I don't know, I think this card's really interesting, I don't really run a lot of cards like this, because visually, too, they're, like, really jank, but I don't know, I'm a fan, I like it. Then I run Factor Fiction. I love Factor Fiction. I don't know what it is, but like, this is like one of the coolest cards to me. It's like, you never know what it's going to be. I don't know. I just, I'm a sucker for Factor Fiction. It's like one of my favorite cards. Then I have Insidious Will, which this card's really cool because it does different things. And if you know me, you like it when I like things that do multiple things. So you can counter target spell, or you can choose new targets for a target spell, or you can copy instant or sorcery and choose new targets. So like this great i get to factor fiction twice and look at 10 cards okay like seriously it's just it's it's so silly like when you realize like some of the stuff or like comet storm again you know what i mean like these things are just ridiculous i love it okay then i have crows and grip because gotta get rid of artifacts and enchantments so this card's great opt pretty basic pretty standard scry draw i love it 
Um, I run Reign of Revelation. This is just one of those classic draw cards. This will probably come out at some point for, like, something else. Maybe, like, a another one mana th draw card or two mana draw card or something like that. Because this is, like, four. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of stuff at four, so I feel like I want to cut this and put it something else in there. I have Rapid Hybridization, and I just realized that I don't have the other one that I always forget. Pognify. I don't have Pognify. I think I just don't have an extra one, but... Uh, which is weird, but I love this card. I do need to get a Pognify for this deck because this card is absolutely amazing. Destroying something for one mana is ridiculous at instant speed, and they get a 3-3 three, three and you literally don't care. I love it. Then I have Reality Shift, which again, love this card. They do manifest, but to be honest with you, you literally don't care. You Whatever you're exiling is very likely worse than what they're going to manifest, and it's instant speed and it's exile in blue. I love love reality shift then i have a repeated reverberation so when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell or activate a loyalty ability which i don't think i have any no because i have no planeswalkers you co copy it twice the only reason i kept this card in over other things that were really similar to this because there's a lot of stuff that does similar things is because it says twice so just doing like anything you're casting your reality shift and you get to do this again twice or three times like that's ridiculous and then if you have riku out oh yeah man the combos in this deck like not combos like infinite combos but like the things like that like the nuances in this deck are so fun i love it like seriously it's so cool then i have think twice can i tell you something really dumb about this card y'all someone freaking wrote on the back of this card and it bothers me. I And n no one sees this. No one. No one would know that unless I said anything. Like, you can't see it. But it bothers me. Okay, I think this is in Korean. Or maybe Chinese. I think this is Chinese. I don't know. But anyways, think twice. I really, really, really love this card. I should probably get a foil one of these anyway, so... Um, and the last card that I run is Unwind. I don't have a um, the four mana one in here. I think I just didn't have any extras. A lot of this stuff was like I didn't have any extras. You know what I mean? So cool. But yeah, um, counter target non-creature spell and on top of the three lands. It's a great card, but it is non-creature. So just something to note. So guys, that is it. I kind of ran through it pretty quickly. I feel like I need to find this sweet spot with deck text where I talk about each card, but not go on and on because I don't want these videos to be like 40 minutes because realistically like I could spend a lot of time talking about why this card is awesome but like you guys already know this card's great you know what I mean so yeah but I really like to know um what you guys think of this deck and like I said it's rough so like a lot of this stuff is like I'm probably gonna change like a solid like 10th or so of the deck um, once I get new stuff, there's a couple things on my wishlist that I'm definitely looking to get. So, um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.